Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jamal Kinder from Petro Droidness and today we're going to be covering what the pressure versus depth graph is and how to convert from pounds per gallon to PSI per foot. We covered this graph really briefly in the previous video. This is the pressure versus depth graph. This can also sometimes be the equivalent circulating density. So the dynamic density of the mud, so the mud density while it's moving, or it can be the pressure. To get the pressure gradient from this graph, you just pick a point at I mean any point and then you see what the corresponding pressure is and then you divide the pressure over the depth because it's it, the mud gradient is psi per foot right so psi is pressure from here foot is depth from this graph or this uh, sorry this axis all right so we discussed in the previous video how mud is pumped from here and then it goes through the drill bit it goes up and then it's it comes out from the previous video we know this is the uh, formation fracture pressure so how much pressure you can exert from the uh, on the formation until you crack it so if you exceed this graph i mean any point in here would lead to a crack in the formation and any point below the pore pressure this is the pressure from the fluids so if you have oil here and you have this formation pressure being 4000 psi and you have the mud pressure at this point being let's say 2000 then the differential pressure so here you have an excess in pressure a 2000 psi difference 4000 minus 2000 so you will have this fluid coming into the well bore and maybe coming out to avoid that you need to stay between these two so higher than the pore pressure let's say at this point okay let's take this point for example at 4000 so if we say this depth d is equal to 4000 feet right so the fracture pressure here is 2300 almost so the fracture pressure is 2300 right psi so at 4000 or at the depth of 4000 you can't have your mud pressure exceeding this pressure because then you will fracture the formation thus so you will have your mud going into the formation losing stability and invading the formation to avoid all this you make this graph let's clean it up just a little bit okay so we have two lines and they represent different things when you want the gradient of the mud so you, you take it at any depth, it wouldn't really matter uh, as long as it's before the point of overpressure, but we'll not get into that just yet. So if we take, I don't know, like 6,000, so 6,000 feet, right? And you just draw a line from here to here, going up to know what the intersection with the pressure is. So it's 2,000, I'd say it's, 2400 all right so 2400 so the gradient is psi so this is the pressure over feet so how many psi's of pressure you are exerting on the formation per one foot of mud so if this is one feet so you will just say okay so how many psi's which we said we said 2400 and that's over 6000 and that would give you 0 0.4 psi per foot so each feet of mud you will get 0 0.4 psi of pressure so if we have 1000 feet of mud let's call this 1000 for now so if you have the mud gradient you just you have to get rid of this feet right so it's 0 0.4 psi per foot multiplied by 1000 foot so foot would go with foot and you will get about 400 psi's yeah, just to demonstrate that it still works in other depths if we take 5000 and do the same so this is 2000 so it's gonna be 2000 over 5000 and you get 205 which is 0 0.4 psi 
perform. So this is not including the pump pressure. So in your calculation, you always don't include the mud pressure, and you you have to really focus on what the graph is showing you. So in here, in this green uh, line, you can see that it starts with uh, fourteen point seven, which is the atmospheric pressure, and yeah, the, the mud gradient at the start wouldn't really be high because you would have a very small height, right? But this starts at 1000 and that it immediately tells you that, okay, the pump pressure is about 1000 PSI. So the pump that's pumping the mud gives 1000 PSI. So h how would you get the mud gradient in this case? So at 6000, the intersection with the, so the, the mud gradient is the mud pressure over the depth the current depth so what we took what this pressure is the 2000 is actually the mud pressure plus the pump pressure so this we, we only want the mud pressure we don't want the pump pressure and we know that the pump pressure is equal to 1000 right from here it's 1000 so it's just gonna be the whole 2000 minus the 1000 so this is the total uh, pressure so the mud plus uh, pump and then you take away from that the pump pressure and it's the same uh, d which is 6000 just to clarify these two mods are different they're not the same mod so you have the well bore where there is a pump of 1000 uh, psi and you have the other well bore the green one uh, this one which isn't uh, being so there is no exertion of force uh, by the pump so because there is no pump uh, there usually is a pump but uh, um, this is just for explanation purposes okay so let, let's go down just a little bit all right so we know now that we have our mud gradient and it's equal to 0 0.4 psi per foot so we need to get this from psi per foot to pounds per gallon and there are two ways to go about this there's the easy way but not the most uh, thought provoking way and there is the harder way which is better let's start with the easy way so from any drain engineer or textbook or um, master google you can know that okay 0 0.052 uh, psi per foot gives you one pounds per gallon of course pounds per gallon is pounds per gallon these are the these are the same the p is lb the other p is per and the last g is gallon so and so we know that it's 0 0.4 psi per foot and we want to know how many pounds per gallon we're getting so x pounds per gallon so you'll do the x equal thingamajig so 1 multiplied by 0 0.4 and that is equal to 0 0.052 x and to get x you'll just 0 0.4 over 0 0.052 and you'll get 7.69 which is 7.7 .7 pounds per gallon or pounds per gallon in engineering usually it's it's easy it's better and easy on the long run to know where your numbers are coming from we have 0 0.4 psi per foot so we're finished with the easy way now we're getting you see it's it's not good <laughs> let's go with the hard way hw homework so the hard way but the better way better way is so we know we have it's 0 0.4 psi per foot so and so 0 0.4 psi is pounds per inch squared one psi is one pound per inch squared and the feet is the same so it's downwards and you want to get it to pounds per gallon right so this pound would be the same so you wouldn't really touch it at all so we need to get inch squared feet to gallons because this is a volumetric unit and these so it's squared and feet so it can be cubed so yeah these two 
are also volumetric. So the easier way is to transfer feet into inch. So we want to cancel this feet out. So we, we know that one feet is equal to 12 inches. So you cancel this feet with this feet and you get yourself a beautiful inch cubed because it's inch squared multiplied by inch and that's inch cubed. Now we have our inch cubed and we want this inch cubed to become gallons, right? So how many inches are in a gallon? A gallon is 231 cubic inches. So 231 cubic inches gives you one gallon. So you will, so that's it. You will just multiply 0 0.4 by your 231 and you divide that by the 12 inches and you get the same 7.7 .7 pounds per gallon. So 231 over 12 is just equal to 1 over 0 0.052. Now you would ask why would I go through all this to get to the same thing? That's because in the future you don't know maybe you would be using any other units and you want to convert but you don't have the constant. So now you know how to get the constant in case um, you're in that trouble. The 7.7 .7 pounds per gallon is the same as the 7.7 .7 pounds per gallon that we found. The over uh, 0 0.052 is the same as multiplied by 231 over 12 because 231 over 12 is equal to 19.25 and you do if you do 1 over that you will get your 0 0.0519 which is just Two. Um, I hope this video was entertaining and useful or useful and entertaining. Uh, share it with your inquisitive friends if you find it useful and I will see you guys or you will see me guys in the next one. Hayakum.